The following segment is sponsored by Providence Health and Services. This segment of AM Northwest is brought to you by Family Matters. Health and education, safety, and the quality of life. K2 and our partners are proud to bring you Family Matters, offering solutions to the hard questions. Because K2 and Providence Health and Services know that family matters. You know, as we head into the summer travel season, there are ways older adults should approach an adventure, whether visiting family in another state or exploring a different country. Here to share how to prepare, we welcome from Providence Senior Health, Dr. Laura Perry. Good to have you with us, doctor. Thank you for having you me. You do specialize in geriatric medicine, so you That's have a right. lot of experience in this. So let's talk about what we should keep in mind when older adults travel. And when we talk about older adults, it can be quite the variation. Absolutely. They're a very diverse group. Yeah. Some 80-year-olds are trekking on the Camino de Santiago right. and sleeping in tents every night. Some older adults are struggling to get down the block with a walker. So I think that's the most important thing to think about when you're planning a trip with an older relative is who is that individual person? What's their level of everyday activity? How fit are they? And to make sure that your travel plans match with their level of fitness and abilities. Good, good point. So if you have an older parent, you want to make sure whatever you're doing will incorporate that. You're keeping that in mind. I think especially if it's been a while since you've seen that older yeah, parent good point, yeah. and you're not sure how they're really doing, it's a good idea to try to get a little bit more information about their day-to-day -day activity and what they can handle before you plan something that maybe is going to be too tough for them. Yeah. I had this experience with my mom. She w when, uh uh, she was in her early 80s and she was de going to go visit from Seattle going to visit a friend in San Francisco she had it all arranged with her friend and I had to talk to the friend and say you you don't understand she cannot be in a plane for that long and mentally she may not remember where she is and of course the friend said oh no she talks to me on the phone and she sounds fine I but you don't know I think that's a particular situation that requires a lot of care yeah. when you're traveling with an older person who has cognitive impairment of some kind. Right. Generally, that's a situation where that person shouldn't be left alone, right. especially if they're going somewhere unfamiliar. And even an airport can be an unfamiliar place where it's easy for bad things to happen right. if they're unaccompanied. Well, and I think some older adults might think they can do something when in reality it may not be possible. Right. right, and so it's never a bad idea if you have an older relative who's thinking about taking a trip to talk with their doctor, maybe have them visit their PCP for a visit, especially sure. if it's a big trip and it's something that's out of their usual wheelhouse. Sure. So that way they can get refills and make sure they have enough to take with them and address any issues that could potentially come up. So what advice do you have for older adults? best way to prepare for a summer trip? So first of all, make sure that you're in the right shape and that matches your activity. Sure. Two, if you have any kind of health issues, probably a good idea to visit your PCP. Three, think about what you might need in your day-to-day -day activity and plan to pack that. If you have any kind of assistive device, for example, like a cane or a walker or a wheelchair, call the airline beforehand and find out what their handling policy is. Make sure that you're comfortable that that's going to be well cared for on the way to your trip. If you have hearing aids, great idea to pack extra batteries Absolutely. so that you're not trying to find them in the middle of the night right. um, when you're in an unfamiliar area. Um, bring a list of your medications with you as well as enough refills and if you have anything that requires an injection or a controlled substance, get a note from your prescriber as well to take with you to the airport. Oh wow, I hadn't hadn't thought of that. Um, sometimes too, older people, any of one of us really, could end up in an ER. Mm. So suggestions on how to handle that. Sure. Well, I think an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure in that case. The most common reason that people end up in an ER during a trip is from an accidental fall. Sure. A couple of things can contribute to that. One, it's getting out of your usual routine. When people travel, sometimes they might want to celebrate and have more alcohol than they're used to. So I think if you're going to do that, make sure that you've got someone with you who can play the role of the responsible friend. Make sure. sure you're having enough to eat, staying well hydrated, and keeping an eye on you for when it's time to call it a night. Um, staying smart about sun exposure. If it's a hot day, do you have a good hat? Are you taking breaks um, to get back in the shade? And if you're someone who has any kind of maybe decreased fitness, maybe you want to bring some hiking poles with you if you're going to be walking a lot more, especially on uneven terrain. Any suggestions for uh, different types of destinations? that require specific preparation? High altitude in particular is one that requires a lot of preparation and probably a visit with a PCP beforehand to talk about um, do you need any medication to help you prep for that or if you're oh. not going to
and even if you're not going to be taking medication, to make sure that you have enough time to adjust to high altitude, mm -hmm. especially if you're coming from lower than um, closer to sea level. You know, you mentioned medications, having lists, and having uh, enough for a refill just in case, and the importance of carrying that with you. Mm -hmm. It cannot be in your luggage that's being checked. Definitely should be in the carry-on. Yeah, absolutely. We want to tell everyone if you would like to find out more and find out how a health care provider, to find a health care provider to support your loved one as they age, call the number on your screen, 503-582-2185. You can also find more health information at ku2.com slash family matters. Doctor, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. All right, we'll